no, no, no. Don't be silly. While the rest of the UK got thunderstorms and downpours, we got nothing. So not to be outdone by the drought and try to remain fairly positive. It is only August, for example. I have been sowing stuff to the autumn and the winter garden. Now I've had to move all my seed starting down right to the cabin because where we had it up by the polytunnel, it just got too hot, too baked. Last summer I was germinating stuff in the polytunnel and it didn't work because little critters came along and ate them. So this year I moved it onto this commercial shelving rack that we got for second hand. Um, we even put some sheep's wool down to try and absorb some of the moisture when we watered so it didn't all run off. But just in the sun it got too hot and the plants just baked. Next year I definitely need to invest in a shade cloth. Uh, for that area, but it's learning. So now I know not on the floor of the polytunnel and not on that rack without any shade. So now I've moved stuff, as I say, down to the front of the cabin and I'm sowing loads of stuff that we can grow in August and September and October to harvest and also things that can sit in the polytunnel over the winter. But here we've got some cosmos on the end here. Uh, next to it, we've got some larkspur and then some zinnias and some sunflowers. Behind that, we've got some chicory. You will notice, however, that some of the seeds are all mixed in together, and that's because my very helpful pig, Margaret, came and knocked the entire seed tray off onto the floor. I had to scoop all the seeds back off the floor into the trays, so they are all a little bit mixed up. Then the other day, I put in some kale plants, so we've got a couple of types of kale. We've got some French beans, which are way behind. You can see they're tiny, and they're probably not gonna do anything at all, but again, we're taking a punt. We've got another lot of cornflowers. We've got some um, chard and some lettuce, um, some more chard, and then we're just starting off some spinach in this end tray. I should also say that this is all a complete test and really depends on your area. Here, we don't tend to get any uh, frosts till about November. So we can kind of take a punt that we can grow through the season. Of course, the main thing is the falling uh, levels of light. Last year, I tried to grow lettuces in the polytunnel, but I started them too late. So they remained tiny and the voles got them. So this year, I'm starting them a bit earlier. Yesterday, I also started some turnips and some radishes, some more chicory and some spring onions. I have started them all in the trays. And in fact, I'm thinking the radishes I may grow in trays because the ground is currently so parched and so cracked and hard they are not going to work being direct sown or even probably transplanted. And of course, radishes are quite quick to mature crops. So you can start them now and probably still get nice crops in September and October. You know, a lot of farming is persistence, perseverance, and a hell of a lot of hope. So this area was supposed to be a beautiful pumpkin patch. There were supposed to be vines all over the ground. This, I was gonna have summer squash climbing up and hanging, and it was gonna be a pick your own pumpkin patch for the coming autumn. And specifically, I was gonna be open in uh, the autumn half term, so people could come and pick their own pumpkins and take photos and stuff. I originally had 300 plants, 99 made it into the ground and now there's only about 30 left now when i say there's only 30 left as well i don't mean big plants i mean this is my biggest pumpkin plant which is absolutely stupid however it is august there's still a couple of months to go I may be completely wrong this may i may be spending my time going around watering these guys twice a day to absolutely nothing. Nothing might happen. I might get one pumpkin. I might get nothing. But what if they work? What if I get something? What if there's a really late frost this year? I can't do the pick your own pumpkin patch, but I can sure try and still get some pumpkins to sell later on this year. So one thing I've sown with a wing and a prayer <laughs> is these two raised beds that have the daffodils in them. And I've sown all of the rest of my sunflower seeds. And at the first glance, 
you probably think, well, there's nothing there but thistles, Jeff. But they have finally, finally started... Is that one there? No, that's an eaten leaf. They have finally started to germinate, although something, I think, is nibbling at them. Uh, there's some more here. There's some more here. And when you start looking, there's quite a few. Obviously, there's also quite a few thistles. There's still enough time for these sunflowers to make it. If we go across to this patch, these are the sunflowers that I grew in tubs. Um, and they've done dismally because they just haven't had the rain. You can see they're already making flowers. Look, look how tall they are. Um, but again, on this side, I put in a load of sunflower seeds. Nothing seemed to come up for ages. And now we are starting to get some come up. So I'm hoping, you know, I put a hell of a lot of seed in here. So I'm hoping that over the next couple of days, everything starts to come up. We might get a very late sunflower crop. The lack of rain and the drought has also caused some major issues in the polytunnel. And of course, normally you'd have to water a polytunnel anyway, but you'd have some ground moisture from outside coming in, so it wouldn't be quite this bad. Firstly, this should be a jungle of tomatoes, and as you can see, there really isn't much. And there's also not many tomatoes. And what's happened, I think, is at the base, you can see there's some, there's some trusses of tomatoes, but as you come up, the number of tomatoes setting on trusses is one, two, three, just one on this one. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is the polytunnel was absolutely sweltering, so sweltering that I found insects just desiccated on the floor. So I think pollination wasn't high. But also as it gets hotter, the viability of pollen significantly drops. So even if they are pollinated, they don't actually set. However, of the few tomatoes I do have, they are so delicious. Mm. My peppers, meanwhile, have had a different issue, and that is blossom rot. Now, blossom rot actually happens when the plants aren't getting enough calcium. I don't think it's a lack of calcium in the soil with my situation, I think it is that the ground is so dry that the plants have been stressed and they haven't been able to draw the calcium out of the soil because of the lack of water. What I've also noticed is there's more blossom rot towards the back than the front and that would also account for lack of watering because naturally the front plants are the ones I water first as I walk in and probably get the most. The back ones are the ones that get the dribs and the drabs. So I'm trying to even out my water so I get less of this blossom rot. If it occurs on the fruit, you can't save the fruit. But you can save the plant, of course, and in my case, that just means some extra watering and even watering um, so that they can draw up the minerals from the soil. Hello, chickadees. You're breaking out. The ducks are always by the lambs, aren't you? We've also brought this handsome beast to the farm. Our last cat is our one-eyed Bengal, aren't you? It's shut away at night, but has the free range in the day. So I'm not going to lie, this year has been incredibly disheartening and mentally massively challenging. As you'll know from the blog post that I put up on the community tab the other day, um, I'll link to it below as well, but it has, it has been extremely hard. But I'm trying to push through it. I'm trying to find some positives in the fact that it is only August and we can still grow stuff and 
next year of course just has to be better.